there's no bystander compressions going on. It's pulseless, it's aptic. I'm gonna start compressions. Rescuer 1A starts chest compressions immediately without delay. Simultaneously, Rescuer 1B preps for an IV or IO line, whichever is faster, and prepares to take over compressions. All right, you've got two minutes. A compression depth of 2.5 inches is the target. So just let us know when you get down to one minute, 30 seconds, and then the last 10. Okay. Right, the uh, is on. Excellent, thank you. What do you need for setup over there? Um, I'm going to be pretty good if you have that in the pressure infuser. Pressure infuser's on. And I'd like you to jump in and do the next set of compressions. Okay, I can do that. On the ground. Isabel, how close are you to being done? One minute. Right. Your first round of epi setup. Rescuer number two secures the IV or IO line and administers one milligram of epinephrine, which is repeated during every sequence of 200 compressions, but not immediately prior to defibrillation. 30. Dave, are you ready? I'm ready. Slide in there next to Isabel. Rescuer number three Defib. places an oral pharyngeal airway with high flow oxygen and prepares to defibrillate if a shockable rhythm is identified. Four. Uh, I'm clear. Defib, clear. Shock it. Get back in there. Rescuers 1A and 1B switch as compressors every 200 compressions or every two minutes. Rescuers must rotate around the patient in a coordinated fashion with clear communication as to their role. In this demonstration, our rescuers are using a CPR feedback device which helps guide the quality of their chest compressions and helps minimize all pauses to chest compressions. This particular device identifies a shockable rhythm during manual compressions and automatically charges, thereby minimizing the pause to chest compressions associated with defibrillation. Isabel, you're in on the next set as well. It'll be the third. Terry, you want to handle the shock? Right. Clear. Clear. Get in there, Isabel. Shock delivered. All right. Tip it up for you. Well. Okay. Epi number two is in. Want to stretch out cat and for you? I can get it set up as well. Okay. So this will be Dave's gonna jump in. You're gonna do the next set of compressions. Uh -huh. so that'll be four. 30 seconds. So we'll do the innovation right after the fourth set when we transition to ACLS. Twenty seconds. Ten. You ready, Dave? Yep. I see B fib on the monitor. Still looks like B fib, yeah. yeah. I'm clear. Okay. I got the fib clear. Jump in there, Dave. Shock delivered. So Isabel, let's notify comm center. We're working the code. We're gonna need a backboard, a gurney. So Terry, as soon as we get the innovation done, we'll get that done during the fifth or the first set of ACLS. As soon as that set's done, we'll roll into the backboard, package okay. them, and start transport. Okay. Yeah, give me the blood pressure. Okay. Uh, it's right there. Let's get it out. You guys see anything else for the innovation? Right here's all set up up okay. there. Still looks like V-fib. I'll shock it this time, Terry. Okay. Like ready. We should initiate that innovation as soon as we start the next round. 
Yeah. Here's while you're coming back in to compress. Yeah. Compressions. Clear. Okay, clear, 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 shocking. Shock, jump back in there. After three full sequences of 200 compressions and rhythm analysis, if there is still no perfusing rhythm, then rescuers will begin 30 compressions and two ventilations until they establish an advanced airway. The advanced airway should be secured while chest compressions are being delivered. End tidal CO2 should be used to confirm advanced airway placement and guide ventilation. Once this is done, eight breaths per minute with a tidal volume of approximately 500 milliliters are coordinated with continuous chest compressions at 100 compressions per minute. A compression depth of 2.5 inches is the target. 30 seconds. Where are you, Isabel? 20. Once a perfusing rhythm is achieved, an antiarrhythmic agent should be administered and a 12 lead electrocardiogram performed. Then, Rescuers should make plans to transport the victim to a cardiac center capable of delivering guideline post-arrest therapies. It is important that this sequence of events be rehearsed and delivered in a coordinated fashion. And because it is so challenging to do effective chest compressions in an ambulance, it is important that the first eight minutes of the resuscitation be done prior to transporting the victim. Video 40, let's start some fluids. So let's move into a backboard, get them on the gurney. Once we're in the ambulance, we'll do a 12 lead, get a blood glucose, and we'll start transport to the nearest cardiac arrest center. In route, we're going to want to keep our end tidal between 35 and 45. Manage your rate to maintain that end tidal reading. Copy it. Yeah.